Now, while we've been hard at work and busy extending GitHub to cover these DevOps workflows over the last year, we've also been really focused on investing in the core daily of experience of just coding and collaborating on GitHub. And so to showcase some of the work that the team has been doing, please welcome my colleague, Neha Batra. Neha? Neha, and I'm the engineering manager of the GitHub desktop product, which simplifies your daily workflow by helping you visualize your changes and share your code easily. So before I go into that, I kind of want to walk down memory lane with you. So do you remember the first time you learned Git and you had this five-step recipe? <laughs> yeah, I did too, and I actually had a post-it on my desk just to remember all of the steps that I needed to take. And that was years ago. Now I'm pretty good at Git, I mean, I would hope so, as the engineering manager of this product. But what I think is really important is that my coworkers and I are fueled by the fact that from setting up your machine to pushing, it doesn't have to be this difficult. That's why from the moment that you download desktop, we have a tutorial for you that helps you connect your editor, invites you to clone and add your repository, and then from that point, you get to do what you do best which is writing your code and gearing up for your commits. So let's take a look at how desktop lets you commit and push your code without having to type anything into your command line. And this video plays in real time, and so I have to keep up with it. So let's see, wish me luck, all right? OK, so what you're seeing here is that the minute you tab in, you get to see your diff, you get to add the lines that you want to add, you get to add the files that you want to add, and then we have emoji support, and you can write your commit. You can even add a co-author and share that credit. So right here, Amanda's writing two commits, and all she has to do is she has to push her code. We push the code, we fetch the latest from your repository, we sync it up, and all you have to do after that is create your pull request, which we have a support for as well. So I know it's hard to see, but in those 30 seconds, I showed you 12 features of GitHub Desktop that aren't built into the Git commit flow. Yeah, isn't that great? We do this for you because as advanced developers, you deserve to save your brain cycles for real problems, not Git problems. And you know what? For your coworker who still has that Git post-it note on their desk, they deserve the same thing as well. And for your manager who still thinks they're cool and can code, like myself, GitHub Desktop extends my shelf life a little bit longer, and I'll take it. <laughs> so that was just the Git commit flow, but GitHub Desktop gives you a lot more. So you see these commit, like these git commands that you might be using on a daily basis? These are the magical incantations that you don't have to use anymore in GitHub Desktop because those are built in. So how exciting is that? Yeah. I bet we forgot some of those features, so Twitter, I know you're listening. Just let us know what we missed. So out of those, these are the ones that we shipped in the last six months. So yeah, we're busy. We've been listening to your problems, and we're shipping regularly to make sure that your daily experience is better. GitHub Desktop is a GUI that connects Git and GitHub, and we make it simple and efficient. We make it so that when we know that we have millions of users out there, we want to save them a few minutes over time because that really adds up. So we don't just shave off seconds off of each commit. We make sure that you don't end up in that place in the first place. So we're building the experience that you deserve to have, whether you're on a Mac, Windows or using GitHub Enterprise. And we know that once your code is done and you're ready to gift it out and give it to the world, you want it wrapped, packaged, reviewed, and shipped as fast as possible. So no one wants to spend more time wrapping that gift than on the gift itself, right? So for the folks out there who just want a faster, more efficient way to work every day, this simple, no hassle gift bag called GitHub Desktop is for you. Did I mention it's free? Because that's exactly how important your daily experience is to us. So check us out, download or upgrade to the latest version, and we're open source, so you can always come and check out our repository. And to you all in the audience, come visit us at the Ask GitHub booth and show us your daily workflow. We'll chat, we'll download it together, and we'll see what your day-to-day -day could look like on GitHub Desktop. And we genuinely want to know what you think. So come with your thoughts. Let us know what you're curious about, and I'll see you there. 
So GitHub Desktop is just one way that we work to make your daily experience better. But to tell you more about improving the daily experience on github.com, please welcome my colleague, Mario Rodriguez. <laughs> Thanks, Neha, and hello, everyone. My name is Mario Rodriguez. I am the lead enterprise product manager. Like all of you, I spend a lot of time navigating within and across GitHub repos, searching the, for bits of code, finding instances along the way. Now, we can all agree that sometimes finding exactly what you're looking for might be a little bit challenging. Well, let's talk about how we're changing that. So let's start with code navigation. I am in the scientist code base, uh, and I am, imagine I'm exploring it, reading the code. I read really, really fast. I'm a fast learner, just believe me on that. Um, and I get to this piece of code, and I'm like, I wonder how this method is actually being used in this code base. Now, cloning the repo, building it, just to answer that simple question is a drag, and it's really a waste of your time. You know, you want it quick, you want it inline, and you want it in the browser. So what if you could just click on it and right there see, OK, this is the definition of the product, but also final references. So that's right. Starting today, semantic code navigation in your browser, no IDE, no need to clone, no need to build for all Ruby, Python, and Go repositories. What do you think about that? <laughs> We're really excited about this. And we're actually doing this for us techies that want to go. We're doing this without having to build your code. Um, it's based on a semantic library uh, that is open source. So amazing props to the team uh, to get us this. So I'm really excited about it. So let's do a jump to dev to code search. And in code search, let's be honest, you need great code search. Many times as a developer, you're really looking for a needle in a haystack, and you need quick results with high relevance. So let's take a look at Robbie's on my seashell repo. You're here, and you know what? You, you know you want to actually find something, something specific. So what if you press F on your keyboard to actually launch a new search experience? Very simple, very smooth. Uh, let's search for which CSH, because with my accent, that gets tricky. Um, so I'm going to put that in there. And boom, you found it. First try, we get the exact match you're looking for, nothing else. Two search results instead of doses uh, of hundreds across the current GitHub search. And I could see that you're a little bit skeptical right now, meaning, is this really better, Mario? You show me search results, right? Uh, so let's contrast it, and then I really expect you to clap, by the way. Um, <laughs> so these are the results with the old search engine that we had. So 70, same, same search, 70. Uh, actual results back. Highest relevance was what you're seeing in the screen right there. And again, let's go to the new one. New engine. Two matches. Two matches. We, we love you too. Don't, don't worry about it. Okay. So um, our new good search experience uh, supports high relevance with exact stream match and option modifiers. Um, it's actually going to go in beta. We're learning more and more. So please sign up and we got you in as soon as possible, but we're really excited about this as well. All right, now let's switch from individuals uh, to teams, because teams is really where the magic happens. Um, code reviews are the livelihood of software teams. Around 87 million pull requests got merged on GitHub last year. Um, so as a team, you want to avoid burnout. You want to minimize time to, time to review. You want to minimize time to merge as well. Well, GitHub cannot help your teams achieve this with code review assignment. So let's, take, let's jump back in. So I'm over here in a team. I go to settings, and I go to code review assignment. I enable auto assignment. Um, and then I want to switch my algorithm. I don't like round robin. I'm actually going to go and pick load balancing, mainly because I want to make sure that no one is overtaxed. So, um, so I do that, and I click Save. So. What I'm expecting to happen now is next time a PR is assigned to my team, then it should actually route it to the right person and do a load balance. So in this case, I'm going to select you know, that, and boom, it's right there again. Um, just to highlight a little bit more and zoom in, it went from my actual team to Naomi, and then we removed the team. So all of this is now built natively into GitHub. So what do you said about that? 
You don't need to install anything else. You just go to your team, set it up, and start using it. Oh, but we're not done yet. Um, you also want to make sure that your PRs don't go and you know, get reviewed in time and actually your project keeps moving, right? And we got you also cover on that. And to do that, we have a feature called Reminders. Um, so again, I go to my team, and in my team, I go to my settings, and instead of assignment, I'm just gonna say reminders. I don't have any reminders set up right now. I click on it, I select my Slack channel, um, put a couple of other things. We do standards at 10 a.m., so 9 a.m. on the default settings are perfectly fine for me, uh, but I actually do not want all of the repos. I wanna actually go ahead and select one of them to, to be able to do better, so we're gonna do an awesome universe demo repo, and then I'm gonna press create. And then next day at 9 a.m. in Slack, you're gonna get this, which is reminders of your pull requests. What well, is actually outstanding, how long it is, and who it's assigned to. And now as a team, you're gonna be able to review it. Again, this is available natively into the platform, and we're super excited to actually bring it out of beta, so please sign up whenever you get a chance. Thank you. Now, daily experiences also expand uh, to our enterprise customers. In fact, you know, GitHub gets used by over half of Fortune 100s. Um, and we're heavily investing in bringing the best tools, workflows, and open source technologies to those enterprise customers. Um, you saw a little bit of this, actually. You got a glimpse on it and of our razor sharp focus on enterprise. Uh, at, um, on our satellite conference in May uh, in Berlin. Um, we announced over around 10 to 15 features and we put in beta that were mainly targeting our enterprise customers. And I'm happy to tell you that over the last six months, so since May up to today, all of those features have actually gone to general availability. They're all available now to our enterprise customers, which is great. Uh, we never done this, and you know, I was actually very surprised I was able to get here today and do that, um, you know, because I was, we were running on it and, and all of that, but we made it, so we're really happy about it. Uh, and it shows our commitment. It, it really, you know, we're, we're kind of humble, and, and it shows our commitment on that, which is, you know, from an enterprise perspective, yes, we have an amazing community, but we got your back in enterprise as well. Okay, so if we fast forward, um, we also know that we're not done and we need to deliver. GitHub Enterprise Server is a tier one application for many of you, which is mission critical, it cannot go down. So we're also heavily investing in giving you the best tools and technology to administer GitHub Server, which is our on-premises offering, at scale. So things like best-in-class observability and remediation, high availability uh, across zones and sites, so you don't have to be just in one data center and you could kind of have a logical GitHub spread across. Um, and then cloud-native disaster recovery because you need that to actually achieve your goals. Um, and with that, I also, I'm also gonna announce today our newest release of GitHub Enterprise, which is 2.19. This release focuses on fundamentals, like triage and maintain roles, security with NuGet, as you can see over there, support for dependency graph, and many other developer productivity tools. So, now, everything you heard me say today, so from navigation, search, reminders, will also be available in GitHub Enterprise early next year. And with that, I wanna Thank you all, and turn it over to Becca. Thanks, Mario. Hey, everyone. I'm Becca, a product manager here at GitHub. And I'm here to talk to you today about notifications. For over a decade, we've been handling notifications of nearly every kind on GitHub. And with 40 million developers doing more than ever on GitHub, we needed to refresh our system so you could more easily distinguish the signal and take action on the work that matters to you. We know managing notifications on GitHub has been all too painful, but that changes today. This is the new notifications experience on GitHub. So how about we dive in and see just how powerful this is? First things first, let's take a look at these notifications. In my notification list, you'll see icons dis displaying the type of notification being received and their current status. Further to the right, there's a label appended to each item, letting me know exactly why I was being notified. And for those fast-moving conversations, you can see just how much unread activity there is for a single issue or pull request, as well as the current participant list. Zooming back out, we can see that there are still many notifications for here right now for me to focus on, 
So let's navigate to where my team really needs me right now, which is my mentions filter. An at mention is a pretty high signal event. Someone wants my direct attention and typically requires some sort of response from me. We include mentions as a default filter for you here in the new notifications experience, so you can quickly access where your team needs you most. Here are all the notifications that have had a mention of my name. Thankfully, I look pretty caught up here, but let me quickly dive into one of these to unblock my teammate. Now, with the all new notifications experience, the complete issue timeline is previewed within the notification experience. This means that while I'm triaging my notifications, I can take action immediately without switching context or slowing down. So for this issue, I'm going to assign myself, add it to my project board, and make sure folks know I'm going to be taking this work on, all within the notification experience with no context switching. Since I'm still working to unblock my team, there's a few other locations I probably need to look at. There are other default filters that we include, such as team mentions, review requests, but for now, I'm going to jump on over to my custom filter for the notifications team to be sure that there's no other work I'm holding up. With the ability to add up to 15 custom filters, I've added one today for my team's product feature work so I can easily zoom into progress and blockers specific to this feature set. I have a couple of notifications here in this custom filter, but since these notifications all look to be closed or merged, let's just select them all and mark them as done. Awesome, I'm at inbox zero for this filter. Pretty easy. Since I spent some time cleaning up some of the high signal notifications, my inbox looks to be in a pretty manageable state right now. To further accelerate your triaging workflow, we have a familiar set of keyboard shortcuts to help you take action on any set of notifications. As we continue to build on top of the new notification experience, we're going to continue introducing more shortcuts to further improve your daily experience on GitHub. Now, before we wrap up, I need to check on one of my save notifications. Save notifications for later allows me to further add a visual treatment to high signal notifications within my inbox. And it gives me an easy way to quickly return to the tasks that I still need to get done. So with that, let's select this one. Here you can see that the team is pretty excited and ready to start shipping this new notifications experience. So how about we get this train rolling, everyone? I'm going to let Ryan know that we might need him here to help us out. So let's see if we can ping him and get him on stage. Thanks, Becca. Hi, everybody. I'm Ryan Nystrom, Director of Engineering here at GitHub. And it is so exciting to be here to share with you a brand new product. And that is GitHub for mobile. That's right. Today, we are announcing new fully native apps for Android and iOS. Like Nat mentioned earlier, there are over 40 million developers using GitHub today. When GitHub started over 11 years ago, everything revolved around Git. And that meant you needed a computer lugged around with you. Nowadays, we don't just write code. We collaborate as team members, and we review each other's code. Today, it's too hard to keep things moving without a computer. And that's why we built GitHub for mobile. Now, you can truly take GitHub with you anywhere in the world. We put so much care into this app so that it fits your workflow. And I'm really excited to walk you through some of our favorite features. The first thing you'll see when you open GitHub for mobile is the new home screen. Here, you have access to all of your work. At the top, we have issues and pull requests that you created, were assigned to, and more. Jump into repositories and organizations that you interact with. Scroll down, and you'll see 
a new section we call favorites. For those of you that contribute to tons of repositories, we added this section so you can pin favorite repositories and jump back into them right from your home screen. Scroll down a little more, and you'll see all the recent activity on issues and pull requests that you created or commented on. It has never been easier to pick up on your work from where you left off on your browser. At the very top of home, you can tap this plus button and file a new issue to any repository on GitHub. We also have a new tab for your notifications. When you're done with notifications, simply swipe them away. We partnered with the notifications team here at GitHub to build a unified experience everywhere. And that includes iOS, github.com, and Android. All of the amazing features you just saw Becca demo will be available across your devices. Save, done, and so much more. You can find the notifications that you care the most about with filters, either by repository or all the custom filters that you create on github.com. They will sync and go with you across all your devices. Now, one of my favorite features are push notifications. We know some of you get tons of GitHub notifications, and we don't want your phone constantly dinging and buzzing. And it's too easy to miss sometimes the really important ones. We will send you a push notification whenever somebody mentions you in an issue, pull request, or comment. That way, you know it's important. Now let's drill into a pull request. Here, I can see everything I need to know. The author, status, branches, and more. I can scroll down and read comments, reviews, and other timeline activity. Now, I mentioned before that these apps are all native. And that includes this rich markdown rendering you see behind me. We put a ton of time and care into this to make sure that you get the best possible experience on your phone. If you want to see more information, just swipe up from the bottom. Here you can see reviewers, who it's assigned to, labels, and tons more. If I want to see what changed in this pull request, I can tap into the Files Changed view, and here view all of my code changes in the poll. Again, this is all rendered natively, including this gorgeous syntax highlighting. But we're not done there. You can also swipe up from the bottom and leave a review on any pull request right from your phone. Comment, approve, request changes. It has never been easier to unblock your projects while being nowhere near your desk. Now, if you want to see the status on your pull request, we also include all of that information. You can view if, there are if you have approvals, if there are conflicts, and more. If you're ready to go, tap the Merge button, and you'll trigger all of your CI or CD from anywhere in the world. I'm telling you, this app makes me feel like I have superpowers. And we are geeking out so much over this thing. And speaking of geeking out, I'm also really excited to bring GitHub into the dark. We built an incredible dark mode experience for both iOS and Android. For you night owls out there, this is way easier on your eyes during those late night hack sessions. And we didn't just stop with dark mode, but we also built an amazing iPad experience. We didn't just make things bigger, but we built entirely new user interfaces and custom gestures. We even have most of the same keyboard shortcuts you'll find on github.com. This is the best GitHub experience for iPad. Now we designed our iPhone, iPad, and Android apps to have absolute feature parity. They share a design system, so they look familiar. But at the same time, we want to respect each platform's design conventions. These apps are built native. We want to make sure they feel native, too. So that's just a taste of GitHub for mobile. There are tons more features that I don't have time to go through. GitHub for mobile is the best way to be connected to your work, 
stay up to date, and keep your projects moving without needing a computer. And all of this is available starting today with a beta on iOS. Just head over to github.com slash mobile and sign up. When your invite is ready, you'll receive an email with instructions on how to install. We have an Android beta in the works coming very soon, and you can look for both apps launching together early next year absolutely for free. And I cannot wait for you to try it. If you're interested in taking more of a deep dive into GitHub for Mobile, please be sure to join me later today for a session. Thank you so much. Now back to Nat.